welcome to Let's Get Growing and we are in 2022 it's January the middle of January and it's a beautiful day and happy new year to you all and I hope that this one's a bit better than the last one um, so anyway it's very lovely today I'm in the polytunnel and I haven't got millions of glares on but it is still very very cold at night so we've had like frost the last few nights so we are going to start growing but we're not going to do anything tender because I know some of you haven't got like spaces to protect things so we're going to focus on hardy plants to start with that you can grow outdoors so we're going to start with your packs so you've got three things this week so the first one you should have a strawberry each I know we tried to grow them we did grow them last year and some people struggled a bit so we're just going to have a look at so you should have a small pot with one strawberry in it that we've grown from some runners off, off our plants. Now I'm looking at this one and I think the problem some of you might have had was that the, you, you possibly planted them too deep. If you plant them, and this one is a bit too deep in this pot, but anyway it needs repotting. So that's the first job we're going to do. You can see all of its roots have filled the pot up but it has got too much compost around its crown. So this, this is the crown. So it's just the little bit that is above and you can see that this one was kind of submerged, which is never good for strawberries or rhubarb for that matter. And it, it, they get something called crown rot and they die. So the well, first thing we're gonna do is to put this into a bigger pot. So I'm just gonna loosen its roots up a little bit. Remembering that we're going to have the crown sticking up and strawberries are fully hardy you don't need to protect them they can be outside and what I'm going to do with this one it's got like a bit of new growth on it here but that one's sort of a little bit brown and a little bit eaten so it's good to cut off the old growth of strawberries and encourage a bit of new so that one should be fine. And then the next thing you've got in your pack. So this is a little ornamental daisy. It's called Pomponette. Um, and we're going to grow it for its kind of wildlife value and to add a bit of colour to your garden. So again, this is a fully hardy plant. You can see its roots coming out of the bottom. So what we're going to do is put it into a bigger pot. You can see the roots have filled the pot up. Tease them out a little bit, not too much. Bit, a little bit of compost in. Some more around the sides. And then we're going to put the label back in so we know what it is. These are labels that are made out of old Venetian blinds that are found at the tip. That's it. And then the last thing you should have, which aren't a fully hardy plant, but you're sticking your food grow in, you should have a bag with three potatoes in it. So these potatoes are called Nicola. They're a salad potato and I think that they're going to grow quite well in pots or bags. Um, so it's not time to plant potatoes out yet, but it is time to buy them and do something that we call chitting. So chitting potatoes. So what you're going to need is a little egg box. So what I've done is I've written on the egg box the variety of the potato so I don't get confused. I've got loads at home who are different for my allotment and for here, um, all sorts of chitting. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, examine the potatoes and you can see this is already, this is where it shoots. It will shoot up and its leaves will grow. So we're looking for which bit of the potato has got the most eyes on it and the eyes are where the shoot's going to come out so we can see got quite a few here there will be some on the other side as well but I'm gonna go with facing this side up so the light is going to encourage these baby shoots to grow 
So we're going to do that. I'm going to go with that where that shoot is as well because that's the kind of dominant one. This one hasn't shooted yet. It's got it's got quite a lot going on around this end, so I'm going to put that up. So then what we need to do with these, because potatoes can get damaged by frost, so um, they need to be in a frost-free place, but they don't want to be too hot. If you put them in a, in a room that's heated too much, then the shoots will just go crazy and they'll go really leggy. And you just want to encourage the shoots to grow quite sort of slowly, really. Um, so they want to be, they want light, the light will encourage the shoots to grow, but they don't want to be in direct sunlight. So this polytunnel isn't suitable really because it gets quite wet in here and also the temperatures can go below zero. Um, so what I will do with these is I'm going to take them home and put them with the other potatoes at my house which are in the attic. So they get light but they don't get direct sunlight. Um, it's a coolish room, it's got a bit of heating at night so it will be protected from the frost. Um, and that is what Chitty Potatoes is. And we'll just be patient and we, we leave them. We're not ready to plant them yet. And then what we're gonna do is just have a quick look back over some of the other things that we've grown. And the exciting thing is my lasagna pot. So you can see there's lots of bulbs coming up in here. There are crocuses, I think these are the irises. Maybe these are the little daffs popping up here. So we'll be watching their progress. That's something to look forward to. Um, you might remember last time my broad beans had just grown very leggy, probably because they're in the polytunnel and they probably it probably does get a bit too warm for them in here, but they'd just grown one central shoot, which was this one. So I took the top off this because there was only one shoot the point of that is if you take the top off it it will put out more bushy growth which is what I wanted and you can see that that has been achieved because there's another two three sort of shoots come up there which is what I was aiming for um, I'm quite pleased with my or or oriental poppy it's a per perennial so um, what I'm going to do with that, because it's quite a vigorous plant and it'll grow into um, quite a it'll bush out quite quickly, puts a lot of growth on. And it, this again is hardy, um, but I think it's totally filled this pot up. Yeah, look at that. And this wasn't even done that long ago. These were propagated from some of our plants in the autumn, so this has done well. So I'm going to put it into treat it, put it into a nice big. disappointing things from the packs for me have been the sweet peas which there's three seeds I don't know how yours are doing but all of ours have very few have germinated whether it's the fault of the seeds I got them from a different place so it could be maybe it was environmental conditions but I've got one only one has germinated in each pot and they look a bit feeble so yeah we normally grow them very easily and we have loads of them but I know winter them in here but never mind. Um, the other, the hardy annuals, California poppies doing well, the hollyhocks romping away. So yeah, most things are doing okay. So while I remember, I'm going to just give these the water. With a fine rose, and especially if you're growing, you, you got to keep remembering to check on your plants. If you're growing in a, a greenhouse or a polytunnel, 
or the cold frame they do get dry over the winter so you do need to keep watering them but do make sure that they're not sitting in i mean these bulbs are on trays they're in, on trays they don't really need to be on trays and you can see that they sit in water which isn't good for them um, so that water needs to be poured it needs to be drained off or the trays need to be removed so they're just sitting on the soil and the moisture can uh, drain away and next time on let's get growing in a couple of weeks time at the end of january i'm going to be very excitingly showing you how to make a worm array and these are our wormeries here and what you might want to do is just look for a container so these containers i just found they need to have a lid on they need to be dark quite strong with a good fitting lid so that's what you need to look out for you might be able to just so I thought I'd give you the heads up on that. So anyway, that's it for today. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.